everyone. It's me, Becky, just stopping in to say hi. Um, I am so excited that we're getting to the end of some of this quarantine stuff and that hopefully we'll be able to get together again soon in some way or fashion. Um, although it has been wonderful connecting to all of you electronically, so I've definitely been enjoying that and getting to know all of you um, in that way. Um, but this last couple of weeks, definitely, I know that I've had to do a lot of uh, forgiving of others, a lot of forgiving of myself, and then also a lot of really just asking for forgiveness from others too, uh, being um, cooped up with um, family or friends or whoever you are with can definitely be a difficult situation to be in no matter how much we love our family I know that sometimes um, even me I can get on people's nerves so um, definitely has been a word of the day for quite some time so uh, it does remind me of a verse as well which is Ephesians 432 which just says be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you and I hope that we can just all keep that in mind as we move forward uh, just to be kind to one another to have a little bit of patience and a little bit of compassion not only for ourselves um, but also for those around us so thanks guys and i look forward to seeing you soon miss you love you all are you hurting and broken with it Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open why forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to. The altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah! Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness 
was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for a crown. Sell the world of the treasure you found. This is our final lesson in our atypical teaching series. For the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about families, some important families in the Bible, but, but our own families too. And, and we've heard stories of, of lies and deceit and disagreements and, and jealousy and deception and hopelessness and, and selfishness. And, and sure, some of these stories have been a bit extreme but they're not all that different from our own not so typical family stories too, right? <laughs> Just like Ruth and Naomi, our atypical families can be used by God. Just like Abraham and, and Lot, our not so typical families can commit to prayer. Just like Jacob and Esau, our atypical families can have the, the tough but profitable conversations in hopes of bringing about God's peace. And just like Joseph and his brothers, the family we're going to be looking at in just a moment, our not so typical families can forgive each other even when it's hard to do. But before we jump back into the book of Genesis, let me just say this. There are so many reasons why we need to forgive and be forgiven by our brothers and sisters, family members or not. But, but I do very much realize that forgiveness is a sensitive subject to some and, and a subject that's hard to wrap our minds around for, for most. There is, there is so much fake forgiveness and false pleas of repentance that's, that it's kind of hard to discern what we should do when we're faced with situations like these, it seems like every big YouTube star now has their own apology video where they, they confess their past sins for views, the right Logan Paul and, and Laura Lee and so on and so forth. And we will get back to all of that in just a moment. But I would like to remind you that no family is perfect. That's because all families are made up of people and people are never perfect. People hurt each other. But when typical families hurt each other, they respond with bitterness and anger or even revenge sometimes. Their first thoughts are, are getting back at the other person or, or leveraging their false apologies to gain control of the situation. And, and atypical families hurt each other too. However, and instead of pursuing revenge, atypical families pursue forgiveness. How? Well, let's look at the story of, of Joseph and his brothers to find out. Joseph was the son of Jacob. In fact, he was the second youngest son of Jacob, but Joseph had 11 other brothers. However, Joseph was Jacob's favorite son, and he knew it. Jacob treated him the best out of all the other brothers, and Joseph sort of liked to rub it in the face of the other 11. He was, he was not quiet about his favorite position, and this kind of gets him in a little bit of trouble. One day, Joseph's brothers, they were out working in the fields. And they'd probably been out there all day in the, in the sun, sweating, dirty, trying to till the crops. And it's at, the, it's at this moment that Joseph, who had not been working, decides to come on out to his brothers and, and make an appearance wearing a special coat gifted to him by his dad. And, and traditionally, this, this coat has been called a coat of many colors. Uh, in, in reality, though, it's kind of hard to tell why this coat was special just from reading the, the Hebrew that Genesis was originally written in. Uh, it was a kenotet pesim, 
which means it was a fancy garment with either long sleeves or fabric that reached all the way down to Joseph's feet or or maybe it was dyed using a couple of different colors. It isn't actually clear that it had many colors, but it but it surely was special, special enough to upset his brothers at just the sight of it. I mean, think about this. Here was Joseph wearing this fancy coat and and why wasn't he working? Clearly he had not come to lend a hand. And and more so If we were to read on in Joseph's story, what were these dreams that Joseph kept having? What was he talking about when he talked to his brothers? What did Joseph mean when he said that they would bow down to him one day? Isn't that taking things a bit too far? And it's at this moment, it's at this moment right here that Joseph's brothers had reached their boiling point. And overcome with jealousy, the brothers, they grab Joseph. They rip up his coat, they throw him into a well, and eventually they sell him into slavery. And Joseph, he kind of goes on a wild ride from here. We we don't have time to talk about all the details of the story, but, but if you don't know it, I actually highly recommend you to pause this video and go back and read Genesis chapters 37 through 50. Uh, but, but in some, after being sold into slavery and then being falsely accused of sexual harassment, Joseph finds himself in jail. But while in jail, he becomes a sort of a famous person for his God-given ability to be able to interpret the meaning of dreams. And this actually catches Pharaoh, the king of Egypt's eye, who had just had a pretty crazy dream. And, and to make a long story short, Joseph helps Pharaoh and he is promoted from prisoner all the way to this person who is second in, uh, in command of all of the Egypt itself. And, and that's, that's where our story of forgiveness picks back up, actually. Because Jacob, Joseph's father, has now died at this point. In the land of Canaan, where Joseph used to live, had been experiencing extreme famine. Joseph's family, as as well as all of their livestock, was starving, and they needed Egypt's help to survive. But through a series of events, Joseph's brothers, they soon discovered that it would be up to Joseph to decide their fate. The brother that they had beat up and threw down a well and sold into slavery was the one who had the power over them to decide whether they lived or died. And, and this was different now. Back when, back when Joseph was still at home, he, he thought he had power because he was his dad's favorite, but now he actually did. As the second in command of all of Egypt, he could easily have his brothers killed if he wanted to. And nobody would bat an eye. Nobody would think anything of it. But that is not at all what Joseph did. Check this out. This is Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. It says, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for the wrongs that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sin and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When their message came back to Joseph, he wept. His brothers then came and they threw themselves down before them. We are your slaves, they said. We are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for the good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them, and he spoke kindly to them. Joseph had every reason to be angry at his brothers. But Joseph... He chose not to be bitter, and he chose not to hold a grudge. That is because Joseph knew that not-so-typical families forgive each other. 
In just a moment, I am going to share some action steps that we could all take towards forgiveness. But, but first, I want to just go back and revisit that comment that I made at the beginning of this lesson when I said that, that forgiveness is a sensitive subject. Here's the deal. This conversation that we're having today, it might be confusing to some people. You, you might have a family member, blood related or not, who has, who has hurt you so badly or so deeply or so repeatedly that forgiving them like Joseph forgave his brothers just seems, seems downright impossible. And, and if that statement resonates with you, I want you to hear me really carefully right now. If, if somebody in your family has hurt you or continues to hurt you, whether that be physically or sexually or emotionally, this, this conversation is not for you. And God is not telling you to move on or to protect them from the consequences of, of their actions. In fact, if this is your story, I want you to go and to tell a trusted adult about this today. Talk to your small group leader or, or talk to me and, and don't hesitate. We are here for you. But, but if that's not your story, let's keep talking. Because just like forgiveness changed Joseph and his family for the better, being eager to forgive can change your family for the better too. Why? Because when we forgive, we demonstrate God's love in a very real and a very tangible way. God has forgiven you so much. In, in Jesus, he came down here and died to forgive you of your sins. And he calls us to do similar for, for others. And just like having tough conversations with family members, like we talked about last week, didn't have to be complicated, this doesn't really have to be that complicated either. How do you forgive? Well, number one, you should probably admit that you have been hurt. Recognize that what this other person did or is doing to you was real. Don't, don't brush it under the rug. Number two, Ask God in prayer to help you forgive. This, this isn't a typical thing to do if, if we've demonstrated. You, you're going to need God's help to do this and do this well. Number three, ask God to heal the parts of your heart that are hurt. God is the great physician and, and go to him for healing. <laughs> he wants you to go to him for this. And in number four, Choose to focus on moving forward instead of focusing solely on what happened in the past. And, and I am not saying that you need to forgive and forget. That's really not a biblical thing to do. But commit to forgiving in such a way that shows genuine mercy to the one who has offended you, not that fake passive aggressive stuff that's so popular in, in our pop culture today. God has forgiven you so much. So, so give some of that forgiveness to those around you. The kind of forgiveness that Joseph showed his brothers is not typical. He chose the atypical thing and so can we. In fact, God has called each and every one of us to be atypical. He is calling us to be the good in our families by, by praying for them, by having tough conversations with them, and by forgiving them. When it comes to your family, don't be typical. Hey, it's Colby again. Last week, Mr. Tim challenged you all to send in photos or, or videos of what you've been doing to, to stay active during this time of, of separation. And that offer is still on the table. We would love to see what you have been up to. And I know that your friends at Access would love to see that too. I know I've, I've been taking uh, walks by the beach and I've been doing a lot of yard work probably not as much as I, I should be doing. And, and Tim has been riding his bike on the Norway Ridge trails, but, but what have you been doing? Send us your pictures, send us your videos, and we would love to feature them in an upcoming Axis Online. But, but one last thing about our lesson topic before we bring this entire atypical series to a close. I, I wasn't kidding earlier. 
when I said that if you're currently struggling or if you're currently going through some type of abuse to reach out to an adult. If you are in a situation like this or if you do find yourself in a situation like this, please, please, please do not keep it to yourself. You can reach out to a small group leader, you can reach out to myself, and if for some reason you don't feel comfortable with that, you can even text the phrase love is to 22522 to speak to an anonymous advocate who is connected with the uh, National Domestic Violence Hotline. Uh, but, but again, I, I missed you all, and I hope to see your faces really, really soon, which, which is actually looking like it's going to happen sooner than later, pending some uh, social distancing type of restrictions. It'd be, it'd be at least really great to get some small groups back together again. But I'll see you all next week. Bye.